And it's a very simple thought, but we need to know who we are in this life. Uh, we're often faced with crossroads. There's decisive moments that we face. There's opportunities that come into our life that will define who we are and will define who, will, who we will become depending on the choices we make. It's in these hours of decision that we either are going to gain a clarity of who we are in our walk with God, or we're going to be deceived by the enemy into thinking that we're something less than what God has intended us to be. And then just like Brother Greg Cock, he said there's strategies to overcome the enemy. He talked about not being ignorant. He talked about knowing ourselves. And then and I would like to just kind of piggyback off that message if that's okay. And uh, it is the enemy's game, and it's one of his strategies to keep us in the reserves, if you will. And make us feel like we're not accomplishing anything. It's, his, it's one of the biggest tools of the enemy, in fact, to make us feel... Uh, less worth than what we are yeah. in Christ. Amen. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. It's his plan that he, if he can keep us from identifying what our ministry right. is. If he can keep us from identifying with who we are, he's really kept us from accomplishing anything in the kingdom. If he can make you feel like a failure and you believe that you're a failure, you're going to be a failure. Yeah. There's an old saying, perception becomes reality. Yeah. How you perceive right. a situation is what it becomes to you, whether it's true or not, it's that's what becomes your reality. So you use shame, guilt, condemnations as weapons to make us feel unworthy. Listen to that. That's something we all face. I don't care how long you've been in God. There's times where you mess up, and there's times where you fail, and there's times where you have shortcomings. And he's going to use these, these uh, weapons against you in order to keep you bound by your own self. He'll throw your past in your face and he'll keep us bound by it. He'll use your shortcomings and mistakes to feel like, like you can never attain victory. He is the author of confusion right. and he is the father of lies. Amen. Man, he's the accuser of the brethren. He knows that if you begin to understand who you are, That's right. that you will be a great threat right. to the kingdom of the devil. Amen. Amen. That's very simple, isn't it? But we forget very, very many times who we are in Him. So I just want to, I'm going to have a lot of scriptures. I'm going to do my best to not uh, read the whole time. But there's so much in the Word of God. As I, I started out with just one scripture. This is the one scripture that God really laid on my heart. It was in 2 Corinthians 5. And, and as I read this, this is what triggered this whole message. And then Brother Klein came along and just gave me the fuel for the fire to, to talk about it. But in 2 Corinthians 5, we, we find a scripture... And verse number 17. If you'll turn there, it's, we're going to stay there for just a minute. He says that, in verse number 17, he says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Yeah. Old things are passed away, behold, all things become new. So in Christ, in, the, in Jesus Christ, we are a new creature. Amen. I'm going to turn these on so I don't have to flip to every single page. Amen. Because I have quite a few scriptures. So you can be seated. It's very simple. It's a very simple concept. It's a very simple uh, scripture. We are brand new in Him. But many times when we come into Him, we feel like we're our old self. And I want you to understand, if you don't get anything else off of this message, I want you to understand this one scripture. You can tune out after this if you're bored. But I've got to tell you this, that you are a new creature in Christ Jesus today. Amen. Right. The enemy does not want you to understand that. I'm going to hit this hard because the enemy wants you to feel like you are your old self. Yeah. But when you were went down in Jesus' name and your sins were washed away and God filled you with his spirit, you became a new creature. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. And because of that, we're going to continue reading in that same chapter. Verse number 18 says, And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. This is the process in which it happened. He reconciled us through Jesus Christ unto himself, and he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. And if we have a ministry, each and every one of us, the moment you became a child of God, you had a ministry that was placed onto your life. And then you became a new creature through Jesus Christ, through what he did on Calvary. You became a new creature, and now you have a ministry to reconcile those like you have been reconciled. 
reconciled. It is your job, it is your duty, it is your obligation to become an ambassador, as the scripture will say, or it is your job to proclaim the ministry of reconciliation. What is that? What is the ministry of reconciliation that is simply telling this world that they no longer have to stay in their old state, but through Jesus Christ and what he did on Calvary, you can have brand new life in him. Oh, yeah. And it's our job to not take this treasure that he's given us and confide it within ourselves and hold it in, but it's our job to minister to those that are around us. I'm not talking about even from this pulpit. I'm talking about in your job place, in your school. I'm telling you that in your, in your circle of influence, in your family gatherings, you need to proclaim that there is life that is more abundant than the life that they are living through Jesus Christ. That they don't have to remain in the same complacent state that they are, that they can become brand new in Him. So we have a ministry of reconciliation. And verse number 19, to wit, that God was in Christ. And then how many thankful for that revelation? Oh, yeah. That God was in Christ. Yeah. Amen. How many knows that we serve the one true living God? And that He wrote Himself in flesh. He loved us so much that He wrote Himself in flesh and died on Calvary and rose again so that we can have this brand new life. There's only one God. Even the demons believe that and they triple. Amen. Amen. I'm so thankful for the revelation that God was in Christ. And what was the purpose of God becoming in, in a man? What was the purpose of him being in Christ? Was that he could reconcile the world or bring back to the world to himself because we, had, we were as people, we were separated from God. Not imputing trespasses unto them. He wasn't there to shame them, the scripture is saying here. He wasn't to bring up their sin. He was there to redeem their sin. Right. Amen. And have committed unto us the word the word of reconciliation. This is an important word that we must understand because the enemy, this is my, this is my whole purpose, so I'm kind of ruining it, but the whole purpose of my message is that God has reconciled us unto himself. Amen. Yes, he, has. he has reconciled us unto himself, and the enemy wants to keep you from recognizing that. He wants to make you feel as far and as separated from Christ as you can. Because if you're separated from him, then you're in of ill effect. Right. But we must grade this word. It says, he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. We like to talk about the word of God. This is the word he's given to us. Reconciliation. Don't forget that word. When you're going through a trial, when you slip up, when you fail God, say he's reconciled you yeah. unto himself. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled unto God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. We are to be his ambassador. We are to be his, his righteousness because of what he did. And then Matthew 5, the 13 says that we are the salt of the earth, the scripture says. And if the salt lost its savor, where it shall be salted, it is thenceforth good for nothing. And if you lose your savor, if you lose your revelation, if you lose the recognition of who you are in Christ, right. then you've lost your savor. You're no longer passionate. You're no longer effective to Christ's kingdom. It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and be tried under the foot of men. Verse number 14, the scripture says that ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. It is the enemy's game, it is the right. enemy's strategy to separate us from our true identity right. in Christ. That's right. Amen. Amen. It is his business, yeah. it is his purpose to steal, to kill, to destroy right. our identity in Christ. Right. The, the moment we recognize who we are, we begin to operate in the spirit. Man, we talk a lot about operating in the Spirit in this church. We talk about the gifts of the Spirit. We're having a series on it on Thursday nights. Uh, Brother Rutherford just teaching about the gifts of the Spirit. You won't operate in the gifts of the Spirit if you don't recognize who you are. That's right. Amen. You're going to be too ashamed. You're going to be too scared. Right. You're going to be too, uh, uh, too sidetracked by who you're not to recognize who you are. Amen. Through Him, we are justified. This is who we are in Christ. Scripture says we are justified. I looked up justified, it says, having done for our marks by good or legitimate reason. Number two, the definition in the Webster's was declared or made righteous in the sight of God. Yeah. Through him, we have been 
been justified. We feel unworthy, but we must understand that we are justified. We are made righteous in the sight of God through what Jesus did on Calvary. So you may feel like you're nothing, but through him you're justified. Romans 5, 1 through 2. It says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Being justified by our faith, our understanding, or our belief in him, and belief of what we are in him, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have access by faith into, into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We shout, we dance, we worship, we praise because we understand we are justified right. to do so. Right. Man, we are not unworthy, we are worthy because of his blood. Amen. Amen. I'm not trying to preach, preach a self-help, feel good message. I'm trying to tell you who you are in Christ. All right. You are justified by Christ. And then you need to recognize who you are as a child of God. You have authority and you have power because you're justified. You've been bought with the price. 1 Corinthians 6. The scripture we've read before is 1 Corinthians 6. If you want to go with Brother Don, 1 Corinthians 6, starting in verse number 19. He says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? The Holy Ghost is in you, which ye have of God, and yes, you are not your own. And then verse number 20 says, For you are bought with the price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And then we are, we are bought with this price. He's already paid the ultimate price. This is simple stuff, but we need to remember it. And then I don't know why God told me to preach this. Maybe there's somebody in here that's battling with the identity of who they are. We sing songs every now and then, I know who I am, or I am victorious, or all these things, and we forget who we are. But we're going through, when we get outside of these four walls, we forget who we are. Because the onslaught of the enemy comes and wears us down. That's right. And keeps us bound. And, the, and just the cares of life, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the all these things. Sometimes we fall into sin. Sometimes we struggle with addictions. Sometimes we don't feel like we are children. Sometimes we don't feel like we're justified. But we are bought with the price. He already paid the price so that we are not our own, but we are his. And that you are connected to the Father. Amen. And this is an important one, John. This is what we read a lot, but you need to understand that you are connected to the Father when you are in Christ. Yeah. And then, now let, let me clarify something. If you're not in Christ, this doesn't apply to you. If you choose to reject Christ, yeah. all of these promises are void. Sure. But those that are connected to Christ... You have victorious lives, and you have a power that, is, that you possess within yourself. Read in John 15, it says, I am the true vine. Jesus is saying this if you're not reading a red letter edition. I am, the, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband then. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Okay, let me just clarify those two scriptures real quick. The enemy wants us to be not, not effective. He wants us to not produce fruit. He wants our trees to be barren. He wants our branches to be barren. Right? We, we talked about that. So what's a good way to do that? To sever the branch from the vine destroys the life. Yeah. So it is important. I know people can be saved without going to church. And I don't know, you know, I'm not, I know you can be saved from your pew. I know you can be saved in your car. You can get the Holy Ghost in your bedroom. But there's something about coming here and staying connected yeah. to the vine. There's something about staying faithful to God and the house of God and the people of God and the body of Christ. There's something about staying connected to Him yeah. that gives you life because if you can be separated and made to feel like you are not part of this, see, the enemy wants to make you feel like you're exiled from the body of Christ, that you don't fit in because your personality, maybe you and Sister Katie, we don't see the same way to lead worship or whatever. That doesn't mean she's greater or I'm less or I'm greater or she's less. We are both connected to the body to produce our own fruit. But the enemy wants to make us look at one another. That's why Paul said they didn't compare themselves among themselves and commit themselves by themselves are not wise. Right, right. We can't look at one another and, and compare ourselves and think that we are not connected. But if you're connected to him, then he will purge you. This is going to be tough at times. He's going to purge you. He's going to break you down so that you can produce more fruit. Number three says that you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. What was one of the words that he spoke unto us? Amen. Reconciliation. We are made clean by what Christ did on Calvary. 
We are reconciled in that the word of reconciliation. You are made through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you accept you abide in me. Then he says that I am the vine, you are the branches. He that divided to me, and I am in the same, should bring forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. And if, a, and if a man abide not in me, he is withered, and then gather him and cast him into the fire, and they are burned. But, number seven, this is where I want to be, seven of the names where I really want to be. And this it says, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Here is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you abide, or so, so shall you be my disciples. So we are connected to the Father, and we are his disciples. We are followers of Christ. Amen. We can ask anything. We have power. We have authority. When we ask things in the Spirit that they can be done. When we claim healing, yeah. healing can take place. When we claim victory, victory can take place. When we lay hands on the sick, they can't recover. When we pray for those that are addicted, they, addictions can and chains can be broken. And we have that power in us through Christ. Yeah. Amen. We are connected to Him. Right. Amen. You've been adopted as a child of the King. Know who you are. You are a child of the King. That's right. And then Ephesians 1 and 5, the scripture we read a lot of times, it says, Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. John 1, this is a scripture we read a lot of times, I'm thankful for this revelation that there's some things, there's some nuggets in there, and John 1, let me skip over after we're talking about the oneness. It says in John 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him, nothing was made that was made. And Him was life, and the life of the light of men. And then we are a lighthouse that is set on Him. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended at night. So I read that you are the light. But you're to shine out in darkness. You know why? Because the darkness can't comprehend you when you're in Christ. Right. He's confused by you. But you know, we always say praise confuses the enemy. When you begin to recognize who you are in the Lord, he, gets, he understands that you are powerful and he doesn't really know how to combat you. And so that your life, that the darkness can't comprehend your life. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same was a witness to bear witness for the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light. But he was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighted every man and coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was not, that was made by him, and the world knew him not. So he made the world, but they didn't recognize who he was when he came into the, into the world. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Listen to this, number 12, this is who we are. But as many as received him, to him he gave power to become sons of God, even to them which believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. For the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Yeah. Man, when we began to recognize who Jesus is, mm -hmm. we become the sons of God. Yeah. That's what that scripture is telling us. So, but many is received him. See, he was not received. When Jesus came into this earth, we know he was rejected. He was not received. Right. But those of us that have received him and recognized who he is, we become the sons of God. Yeah. We must understand that we are children of the king. Praise God. And because of that, we have a, an authority and a power that comes and, and is explained in Romans 8 and first, verse number 14. He says, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry out the Father. That he is our Father when we receive him. Amen. And we have a beautiful relationship with our Father. Who are you in Christ? You are a son. Yeah. You are justified. You are bought with Christ. Amen. You are reconciled unto him. And then all these things are, are tremendous revelations that we must, must, must have in order to become effective in the kingdom of God. 
that we can cry out, Father. There's times where my sons just irritate me to, to no end. But no matter what, I still love them. And they can melt my heart just like that. No matter how bad they go, they come up and they, I can tell they're sorry and they're sincere. And I'll, even when they're not sorry, when I, when I discipline them and they're off quiet, even though they did so bad and deserved it, I still, my heart melts for them because they're my children. Right. And we need to recognize, I know that this can be uh, a dangerous place to be, I guess, and you can get just like anything unbalanced. Our God is not this little teddy bear up in the sky that is just a genie that says, poop, what do you want, poop, what do you want, and gives you whatever you want, but he is our Father. And we have a relationship with, we can come boldly to the throne of grace, right. the scripture says. So we can have a relationship with the Father that is like the relationship we have with our children here on this earth. Yeah. That he understands that he knows sometimes we're not always going to make the right decisions. And sometimes he has to discipline us because of those, but he loves us irregardless. Right. Mm -hmm. Understand that you are a child of the king. You can cry out of father to the king of kings, the one that created everything that is. This is what that scripture in John was saying. saying the, the one who created everything came into the world that he created and they didn't even recognize him. But those that did became sons. And then we became adopted, as the scripture says, when we follow the spirit of God. When we're, at, when we're longing after him, when we're down here in travail, when we're at our home and we're back we're praying and we're longing after the Spirit. We're trying to be led by the Spirit. We become the sons of God to the point where we can be adopted into Him and say that we cry out the Father. And then He says in verse number uh, 17, He says, that, And if you're children, then you're heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. That is awesome. Have you guys read that? That's awesome. It's a beautiful revelation. We're joint heirs with Christ. That means that we have the power to lay hands on the sick, and they can recover through Him. We're joint heirs. That means we get to grow up and become uh, eternal beings with Him forever. We're joint heirs of Christ. It's wonderful. But this is the part that's a little difficult. He says, "So be that we suffer with Him, right. that we may also be glorified together." So in this life, we will have trouble. Jesus even said that. Right. Yep. But don't be in fear. For I don't remember the world, he said. So Paul recognized that. He said, you know what? I'm a child of God. I'm joint heirs with Jesus Christ. I have a, a connection to the Father. And I know that I'm going to struggle a little bit. And he sat there and I think he waited. He read it in context. It's almost like he was kind of laying it out saying, I'm going to be a child of God. I may have to suffer with him a little bit. But then he goes on to verse number 8. He says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time Right. Are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. That we are children of the King, and there's going to be a day when the trumpet sounds and everything's going to be worth it. Amen. Amen. And don't quit too short. Don't feel like you're a failure because you're going through struggles. Continue to embrace your relationship with the King of Kings because you are adopted as a child of the King. Oh, yeah. Amen. Not only that, not only are we adopted, but we are chosen. Amen. That's beautiful. It's wonderful. John 15 and 16 says that we are chosen. It says that you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. So we've been chosen, we've been ordained that you should bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of my Father in my name, he may give it to you. Yeah. Amen. We can uh, we can knock the name and claim it mentality, but we've got power to name something and claim it. And we do it in the right spirit. And we're not asking for this. Not asking for ourselves, but trying to bear fruit for the Father. But we are chosen. He's ordained us that we can bring forth fruit. Man, sometimes you feel like you're nothing. First Corinthians, or First Corinthians 1 27. It says, But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. He's chosen us. Sometimes we feel like we're nothing. He says, He's chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things or refuse the things which are mighty. Man, you feel like you mean nothing. You feel like you have no gifts sometimes. You feel like maybe I don't have anything to offer. You Sometimes you feel like maybe I don't know enough about the Bible. Or maybe I don't really know how to pray. Or maybe I don't understand all of the fullness of the revelation of the oneness of God. Or maybe I don't get all this stuff. Or maybe, you know, sometimes you come into church and you feel like somebody's so anointed. I mean, I'm up here every song service. And there's times where I come in and I feel like, man, somebody else could do a way better job than me. I don't know how I, how, I, I'm an organized, my praise team. I'm one of the most unorganized praise team leaders you've probably ever met. It's, it's embarrassing. But you know what? God moves in our worship. 
fortunes Why? Because he takes the foolish things to confound the wise. And he takes the things, and I'm not making an excuse to not practice, but I'm saying that even when we're not prepared, even when we don't have all the answers, even when we don't know the end from the beginning, God steps in and makes it right. Because just like Paul said, his strength is made perfect in our weakness. Then recognize who you are. You are chosen. Amen. He chose you and ordained you. Amen. Let's continue on in that verse Corinthians. Go to number 28. He says, In the base things of the world and the things which are despised that God chosen, yea, the things which are not, to bring to bring to not the things that are. Do you feel like you're nothing? Do you feel like you have nothing to offer? He's going to give you more to offer than anyone else in this world could ever bring. Amen. Verse number 29. And he says that no flesh should go in glory in his presence. It's a beautiful place to recognize who we are in him. Because it is through him. Amen. I can do all things through what? Through Christ which strengthens me. Right. Amen. First right. Peter 2 and 9. It's a scripture we like to quote a lot of times. He says, but you are a chosen generation. Oh, yeah. Listen to this. We, we preach about this, but we don't embrace it. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. How are you royal? You're children of the king. Yep. You have royal blood running through your veins. You're a child of the king. That's right. That you are a holy nation. You're a peculiar people. That you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Verse number 10. And then, which in times past, you were not a people. But now you are the people of God which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. When you come to Christ, you were nobody. But when you came to him, he became a child of the creator of the universe. Yep. Just like that. Praise God. Just by embracing him. Understand who you are. You have favor with the king because you're his child. We are his body, as 1 Corinthians 12 and 27 tells us. Amen. Now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. This is right in the middle of what the is Brother Rutland is teaching on Thursdays. Talks about how we have the gifts of the Spirit and we're all part of one body. And there's different gifts and different administrations, but one body. What is that body? We are the body of Christ. We are called to do His work. We are called to do it. So when you feel like God's using you, don't hold back. Don't be ashamed of that. Embrace that. Step into the gift that God has called you to step into. Amen. Amen. We are loved, as Romans 5 and 8 says. He says that in Romans 5 and 8, he tells them that he has commanded his love towards us. That while we were yet, what? When we were perfect? When we had it all together? When we understood everything? When we never messed up? He loved us because we were so good? Did he love us because we were so good? No. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Right. Awesome. I mean, I know this is elementary, and I've been in church 13 years, and I've read all of these, every single scripture, I've probably even preached on some of these before, but as I'm reading them in this context, it's just given me an excitement, it's given me a joy. I'm taking these scriptures literal from now on, because I believe God has a plan. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for you while you were a failure, he died for you while you were a crippler and a complainer, he died for you when you were a born struggle with addictions. He died for you when you were unlovable. He died for you. You were not a people, but you become a people. You didn't have mercy, but now you have mercy. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, a holy nation that you should show forth the praises of him. He's called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are children of the king by adoption through Christ Jesus. We are joint heirs with him. We are children of the almighty God. We have power when we call on his name. And we are loved by him. Oh, yes. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would, should would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He loved you while you were unlovable. Amen. Amen. And then in verse in Romans 8, he goes on to confirm it a little bit more. He says that, you know what? I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present, nor things to come, neither height nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, 
which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through Jesus, we have unseparable love. It doesn't matter what enemies come our way. It doesn't matter how high we are or how low we are, what's coming in the future, or what's here in the present. His love is unmeasurable. It's unseparable. It's unending. It's unfailing. Amen. And through him, we are loved with an unseparable love. What a beautiful revelation. Because in this world, there's so much hatred. In this world, there's so much confusion. In this world, there's so many people that are deceivers and liars and backbiters and gossipers. And I pray that we don't have that in the church because I believe that God loves us with an inseparable love. Amen. And then we need to embrace who we are in that, that through Christ, we are loved. We are unable to be separated from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And then we are victorious. If you read uh, just a few, uh, just a chapter of scripture right ahead, it says, they in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. In 1 Timothy 1 and 7, he says that he hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of a sound mind. And then we are victorious in him. In 2 Corinthians 2 and 14, he says that he causes us to triumph in his name. He causes us to triumph. Amen. Amen. We are victorious through Him. Through Him we are free. Galatians 5 and 1. Amen. It's, a, it's just a beautiful understanding of who we are. Galatians 5 and 1 says that stand fast therefore in the liberty which wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. We are free through His blood. And that we are not to be entangled again with the bondage of this world, but we are free. And then, through Him, we are forgiven. Colossians 1 and 14. To read that scripture, Colossians 1 and 14 says that in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. In verse John 1 and 9, He says that He is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. And to forgive us from all sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. In Psalms 103 and 12, he tells us that our sin is going to be as far as the east is from the west. In Hebrews 8 and 12, he says that he will be more merciful. Amen. Amen. He will be more merciful and our sins will remain no more. Praise God. Amen. We are forgiven. Yes, we are. Know who you are. Do not stay bound any longer and stay in complacency. I want to say, I'm going to just go through these real quick. He says that we are brand new. We are a new creature of him. We are ambassadors, our witnesses of him. Through him we've been justified. Yeah. And then through him we've been bought with the price. Yeah. We are not alone, we are his. We are connected to the Father. That so much to the point that if we ask anything in his name, it shall be done. Amen. We are adopted as children of the King. We are his children. We are joint heirs with him. We are chosen to be something supernatural for the kingdom of God. We are his body to do his work. We are called to do his work. We are made to be, we are loved by him and we are made inseparable by that love through him. We are victorious. We are free. We are forgiven. Praise God. Amen. Through Christ Jesus. Why don't we just thank the Lord right now that he's given us all of these things through him. I want you to, I know this is not deep, but I want you to recognize that you need to get it inside your mind and say, Lord Jesus, I just thank you right now that you brought me out of darkness into this heart and this light. And Lord, I may have been a sinner when you found me, but God, you loved me to the point that you made me a brand new creature. That old things have passed away and all things in my life have become new. I believe, Lord Jesus, I just thank you for making me a brand new creature today. Lord, I thank you for a 
are. When you wake up in the morning and your feet hit the floor and the enemy starts to attack your mind and he says that you're nothing, or you fail, or you messed up, and you begin to see those things that those failures that you've had in your past, and all of a sudden the accuser of the brother comes and he says, You are a liar. I'm telling you, Abraham lied, but he wasn't a liar. I'm telling you, David fornicated and committed adultery and lied, but God called him a man after his own heart. So there's forgiveness when you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hey, there's freedom today. Give the Lord one more hand clap of praise this afternoon. Amen. Hey, Father, we sing right now. We just love the Lord here for a little bit. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap of praise for this time. Aren't you thankful? Amen. For you, I am thankful. Hallelujah. We are forgiven and we're chosen and we're set and we're victorious. Amen. We thank you, God, for those mighty words this morning, reminding us who we are and the power that comes in knowing the identity of who we are. We love you, God. Amen. At this time, we're going to let you be dismissed. If you want to use the restroom, grab a drink of water, go ahead and do so. The kids will be down in, in just a minute or two. We'll start our evangelistic service here in just a minute. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name.